Whoa, it's Woolsey. Welcome back to another Geometry Dash building video. Today, I am doing something quite easy, quite simple, quite laid back because obviously I've been on a huge break. I was sick. I had a two week gap in content. I apologize a lot for that, but we're back. Welcome back. Full steam ahead. We are going back onto the Rob's Vault page. We're going back to the baby levels, starting with Stereo Madness, and we are going to be making a part in this as part of my If I Had a Part in Blank series. Which part of Stereo Madness do I hate? Normally what I do for this series is pick out my least favorite part of a level and build my part in it, in place of that part that I don't like very much. However, Stereo Madness is pretty solid all round, but I thought this is the perfect thing for me to eat myself back into making content and get back on my feet after taking such a long break. I even got my glow on my icon this time. I never wear this, so I might as well put it on for my big comeback. I'm thinking of replacing some of the red section. Yeah, these platforms, kind of dodgy, not gonna lie. Triple spikes are squashed in. We need to fix that. All Rob Top triple spikes are actually squashed in. Let me show you. Look at this. Let me show you what a real triple spike looks like. Boom. Look at the difference! That is a fraud. We don't stand for fraud triple spikes, so I'm gonna delete this entire red section. I will make my own- wait, I shouldn't delete it all. I should, like, delete it a little bit at a time so I can look at how this is made. Wait, the Rob Top levels have the classic slab object. See, look, I can add this to my custom objects and have the classic slab instead of having to go get a colored one and then change the color to black. You know, it's just so much easier. Gonna try and be crafty with the way that I place these. And I gotta mix them in with the pillar objects too. Gotta add the ground spikes on the inside. That could be cool. A complete drop down, and then we have this platform over here. It's kind of extended. I'm gonna put these spikes at the top, and we can have another platform like so that you could jump onto, but you're never gonna live realistically. Yeah, kind of like that. Then I just take these ground spikes, get a little slice of ground spike pie in there, rotate these downwards. I'm actually gonna extend that platform all the way out and make you jump off so I can have a bunch of ground spikes at the bottom. I guess I'll just reuse this structure over here. Did Rob shrink in a double spike? Oh, dearie me. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I- That's a shrunken double spike, hello? Rob Top, what were you thinking? Oh, imagine this structure. This would go so crazy if you could jump that spike afterwards. <laughs> It's synced to jump up there, but I'm actually going to make it so you have to jump this one instead. We can keep this structure, but I am going to make this a real triple spike because we ain't no lames. Okay, then we can definitely have uh, this structure over here, but reversed. Again, not real because you're on a platform to start it off, but it's going to be a nice swing into the actual triple spikes that I'm going to put in. Not bad, okay. I think I can delete the rest of Stereo Madness now. I understand how it works. Okay, not the rest of Stereo Madness, the rest of the red part, I mean, because that last chip part is cool. I'm trying to set up a bunch of platforms right now that you really have to pick and choose whether you jump or fall on. I really don't have many gameplay options, so I'm doing my best to kind of mix it up. Can I have a platform down here that you have to avoid, actually? Because I'm placing a spike on the end. Hmm. We can start the ground spikes with another slab because it's just fitting and it looks cleaner. This is kind of a streak that we're going on right here of just constant thinking, but it's going to end right there. We're going to drop back onto the floor. This part is weird because it appears cluttered, but it's actually quite calculated. If you jump on this block, you die. And then obviously there's the drop down, which kills you. So you got to know what you're doing. Actually, do I want to use that block or do I want to continue the slab? I think the slab is a better look because I can mix different types of blocks and then we fake. Mwahaha. <laughs> Mini chain up there. And then we have a big rod here. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I understand the stereo madness lingo. I mean, it's not a language. I don't know why I said lingo, but you know, you knew what I meant anyway. Gonna place this double spike right in the middle of that jump, so it feels as safe as possible going through there. And we can have a spike either side of this jump with a half space like so. Really using the mini spaces and half spaces to my advantage. Trying to be creative in how I format these rods. I'm changing them from P1 and P2. So this part kind of changes as it goes on. It starts off on P1 and then it goes in to P2 at uh, the next part after this floating block section. You see right there? Nice. And then there's the P1 in the middle of those. And those look cool. Fakes are good if they're readable. And I'm not sure if this is a good one because it's very far off the screen. Like it's almost unreadable. You have to process within like four blocks that you have to jump here if you were like sight reading it, which is quite 
Mm. Man, I might add like a little cue like right here that kind of scares you into jumping, but it's actually the right choice, you know? Is that fine? I don't know. It looks like, oh, this is weird. Yeah, with that, you know for sure that you're jumping. That can be the triple. Beautiful. This part looks bare. It looks so bare. I wonder if I could just cheese this a little bit. Add these lights just kind of hanging from the ceiling ominously. That's not bad. Hey. All right. All right. Maybe if I attach them to blocks, it'll become more viable. Because then they have more reason to be there. Yeah, that's all right. I don't mind that. And it could also be pretty distracting, which I like. And I'll mix up the chain colors and stuff. And then I guess we're going to have a couple of really tight jumps like this that are blocked by another chain object. And I I wonder for the coin if we could land on a platform like so from jumping late on this one. Anyway, we could jump over another spike pillar. Would that work? That seems so off. But if it worked, hey, we could have a cool looking drop there for the regular path, I guess. But how do I make this not look like the path you're supposed to? I guess this spike. Yo, oh, what am I doing? I could just extend it like that and then elevate this platform up a lot. And then we can kind of disguise it with more of these blocks at the top that just make it look like a cool design at the top. So devious. Oh god, is this jump possible? Please be possible at least. Come on. <laughs> I've made the jump impossible. Awesome. A few more pixels to the left, and that should be a valid jump that is really well disguised into the level. Or could I make this cooler and extend the platform even further? Now I'm just trying to figure out the craziest coin path I could possibly put. Well, craziest as in, like, craziest considering the boundaries that I've got right now. Can't really do too much that's crazy. <laughs> How high can you go? <laughs> we go all the way up there and have the coin really low. Oh, this is going to be such a tease. We have to have it right there because you can't grab that with a regular... Yes, you can. Maybe a little bit higher then. No, you can just get it. Stop. No, why can you still get that? It needs to be visible on the main path. Oh, <laughs> what a tease. Imagine. Oh, dude, you're just inches away. I got to say, I think I've done pretty well here. Okay, and with this, I think this part is pretty much done. Got to arrange my final platform best I can. Okay, cool. Oh, I love that coin so much. I'm not going to lie. I kind of underestimated the amount of time that this would take. I mean, I haven't stuck too closely to the Stereo Madness design. Obviously, I've tried to ramp it up just a little bit. I haven't went too crazy with the designs because obviously there's quite a few Rob Top levels. I could go through a lot of them and add a lot of different styles and make them crazier and crazier each time just using the 1.0 blocks. Like, I haven't done too much to make this stand out. I've literally just tried to arrange the blocks in a cool way instead of trying to make the actual blocks themselves look cool with just the blocks themselves, if that makes sense. Because obviously I could add glow and, you know, pulses and stuff, but I didn't want to do that. Oh, I definitely could. But I'm going to save them for the later Rob Top levels. I just want to know what you think of this idea of just going through all the Rob Top levels and adding my own parts in place of the maybe least interesting or most lacking parts where there could be more done to them like so i've went kind of crazy with the structuring i'm honestly forgetting my own patterns here which is interesting i've forgotten to get my own coin yeah that is so annoying oh my god but yeah that is my part in stereo madness i just want to say thank you to rob top for the opportunity for the collab i expect to see this level on your youtube channel soon uh, and I will be taking my money. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If I had a part in Stereo Madness, we'll call it Stereo Madness 2. Whizzle. Stereo Madness Whizzle, Dizzle, Sizzle, Flizzle, Thizzle. There we go. Let me know what you think. Obviously, I'll add actual part remakes in this series too, but I think it could be cool to have, like, every once in a while, a Rob Top level with my own part. Thank you for watching. Check the links in the description. Leave a like and subscribe, and have a good day.